What, what it do, baby? baby? Today we got cartoon episodes that traumatize children. Let's Goose see what we got. Dream. Pingu's Pingu. Dream. Pingu was Pingu. a Swiss British stop motion claymation children's show created by. Where's where Swiss we? British? Where, huh? is, where is that? The Swiss British. Swiss where British. Is, where's the Swiss British? Sweden and Britain. Mm. It's two different countries. Mm. It's probably just mm. aired in both. Next one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Otmar yeah. Gutman in 1987. I've the main character is We've a penguin called it. Pingu who Obviously. lives in the South Pole along with his family and friends. The show aired on Swiss. BBC Children's and Education and episodes averaged no. five minutes in length. The Today, hell? we will be talking about season one, episode 26. Pingu's dream. The episode starts off as normal, nothing out of the ordinary. Pingu's mom is reading him a bedtime story, and Pingu begins to drift yeah. away to sleep. He wakes up with the sound of his igloo jumping, and before you know right. it, the igloo flies away. Then his what? bed extends its legs, and it begins walking. So the camera cuts to this creepy walrus watching Pingu and his okay. bed go about their day. Not to mention that every time the walrus pops up, these synths are played. Just It just gives you some uneasy feeling. Oh, it's about walruses eat fucking penguins. What oh, the, hey, the things walrus. involving walruses being creepy? Like what the, the directors keep showing the audience how the walrus is just watching Pingu. Just Eventually, the walrus makes <laughs> his introduction, and you know how the directors made this already creepy character make his introduction to children? This is how. how. <laughs> it's clear to see that the walrus is supposed huh? to have this like goofy personality that finds everything it's funny and just wants hell. to play. Yeah, but they really ugly. messed up by making him almost human-like. The walrus begins messing with Pingu oh, and yeah, eats his the, bed, yeah, all the... while non-stop laughing. Pingu and his bed begin running away, Very and creepy. Pingu ends up falling down a hill of snow. It was actually a pretty cool transition because the next camera zooms out, and you can see that he's in his room again. The episode uh, ends with Pingu crying and his mother consulting him. Yes. That wasn't that bad. That's how this episode that ends. Wasn't that bad. Not that only is this ending to the episode, but this was actually the season finale. This episode was was highly controversial and was eventually banned Why? from television due to the giant walrus being too scary and unsettling for many young viewers. The creator, Omar Gutman, that, actually but... used the same walrus model in a German short film he made years prior. This caught me off guard because the voice he used for the walrus is so unexpected. Here, I'll just play the clip. <laughs> Ain't no way. <laughs> yeah, that's German. Ain't yeah. no way. Ain't no yeah. way. Um, let's move on. Let's move on the list. Yeah. But that wasn't that bad. That wasn't uh, that bad. He, he got bad on TV. Blues, Tom and Jerry. Tom Look and Jerry need blues. no introduction. I'm 100 sure. No, this is a this train. This video knows exactly who these two are. Blue Cat Blues is about Tom's yes! love for a female no. cat, which doesn't love him back. The video begins with a quote by Jerry's narrator while watching Tom sit on the train tracks, patiently waiting for the train to come by. The no. quote is, "Poor Tom. In a few minutes, it'll no. all be over. For the first time since he met her, he'll be happy." Poor. They put this in Tom and Jerry. I don't remember that narration. Poor miserable love sick creature. I don't remember that narration. I remember the episode of him sitting on the track, but I didn't know he was sitting for it to come. Cause like I saw it later in life that they said that's what it was, but I never. Poor miserable never love put sick two creature. Two I suppose people will say I should have helped them. I know, but it's better this way. Talk about a kid's show. Game. I've never Whoa. even heard a narration in there like that. The episode, we see just how much Tom is in love with this cat uh, and how he's overthrown by another cat hey, by the yo. name of Mr. Butch. The cat with more money, more gifts, a better car. My boy was down to bad. Milk, Damn. Which in this episode is a substitute for alcohol. Tom yeah. is seen sliding down the gutter until Jerry saves him. They get splashed uh, by some water and come to find out it's Mr. Butch and the love of yep. Tom's life riding married. away in his car Damn. with a just married son. After this, and the he, same thing happens to Jerry Damn. as his girlfriend is riding away with another mouse. Jerry brings himself oh. down to the train tracks, <laughs> sits next to Tom, and both patiently wait for the train to pass by. The episode ends with the haunting horn of a train. No! That's wild! That's wild! I'm not That's gonna lie, wild. I don't remember hearing the train. I always thought that part was edited. That's this episode crazy. was banned by Cartoon Network and Boomerang due As to it references to alcohol and- yeah. Also, I just want to clear up a common misconception, and that is that this is actually the finale to the series. It's not. Okay. Okay. Well, oh, man's man's best still don't make it better. Ren and Stimpy. Nah. Ren and Stimpy ran the <laughs> campaign from 1990. Nah, we already know Ren and Stimpy wild with the chainsaw bit. One to 1996 and focused on a sociopathic chihuahua and a clueless cat. This <coughs> show got away with so much what? shit, it's yeah. actually scary. Season 2, yeah. episode 4, opens up with a man by the name of George Licker adopting Ren and Stimpy at George a pet store. Licker. Once he takes them home, he puts them through a bunch of rigorous tasks to see if they can keep up with how he wants his ideal pets to act. In one scene, he forces Stimpy <laughs> to get on his couch so that he can learn how to be quote unquote disciplined and well just watch what's the discipline what is the discipline do you have a heart attack? 
That's a good boy. I have no ah. idea how Nickelodeon let this show air in the what first happened? place. What? Eventually, George says that his pets need to learn how to attack. So he puts on this padded ah. bite suit, and Stimpy is reluctant due to him being his owner. Ren, on the other hand, takes full advantage <laughs> and begins beating the everything shit out of George with a paddle. So much so that George's head does a full 360 and Whoa. a right eyeball falls out of its socket. Ren continues on his rampage Whoa. and just doesn't stop beating this man to a pulp. It even shows George with X's for eyes, and we all know what that means. Though he actually didn't die, okay. it's still quite disturbing to add that okay. little detail. But the disturbing parts of this episode don't end there. George climbs out of his suit, breathes like a maniac, and congratulates Ren on being a true champion. The episode ends with all three characters dancing. Yeah. Now, this episode actually Why never ended up airing on Nickelodeon. It was banned once they uh, saw what it actually contained. Where'd you get the but footage this episode from? was moved to Ren and Stimpy oh, okay. Adult Party Cartoon. Okay, and that all. show was basically a revival of the original, except with very sexual... It was just a very sexual show. I mean, if the creator went from making a kid's show and turning that kid's show into That's a That's a weird sexual, creator. I mean, I guess we could see where weird. his mind was. Yeah. We could tell that this creator was trying to go with this dark humor, but it just ended yeah, up Nah, it didn't hit. It kids. didn't hit. Nah, it's not the right thing. Here's show, buddy. What's that? You do it. for two. Cat dog. Cat, cat dog. dog ran for seven years. Damn. The nostalgia thing. Cat dog. Oh, no, no, cat dog. Yeah. to 2005. You may recognize Dog's Damn. voice since it's Tom Kenny, SpongeBob's voice actor. Teeth yeah. for Two is actually oh. a fun concept for an episode where whenever one of them does something, the other one feels it. Except it revolves right. around teeth. Look, I hate the dentist already. Yes, yeah. I do go. But Big just facts. the fact that there's drills in your mouth. Pause. Mm. Nah, bro. I just don't <laughs> like the butt. Anyway, the dentist tells them that the food they eat affects the other's teeth, resulting in Cat's teeth to become brown and withered. Cat tries oh. to convince Dog to start eating healthy, but then turns into a battle, seeing who can do more damage to the other's teeth. Cat chews on Damn. ice, and Dog chews on foil. Later Damn. that night, Dog is asleep, and Cat attempts to brush his teeth. He is unable to do so because of all the food in his mouth. So what's the next best option? That's right. Traveling inside of their own body, to come out as an inside out cat wait. out of dog's what? mouth. Wait, 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 wait. Ah! Dog screams of horror and swallows Cat back down to where he's supposed to be. Uh, Skipping to the end, they get their teeth fixed, but end up getting food allergies from all the junk they ate throughout the entire episode. Never thought I'd see an inside-out cat trying yeah. to brush a dog's teeth. That was like a prolapsed. Uh, we're not yeah, doing that. one of those. Teeth. It was a prolapsed a-hole. That's basically to Knuckles and his was. hilarious problem, The Misadventures of Flapjack. Oh, yeah! The Misadventures of Flapjack was another show that got away with so much nah, disturbing Flapjack shit. Was crazy. Personally, as a kid, I loved it just because it was so gross Obviously, and I thought it was so did. funny back in the day. I remember pausing it at those funny still frames of like really detailed zoomed in pictures of the characters faces mm. anyway season two episode four is knuckles and his hilarious problem oh. this episode is about addiction more specifically uh, Knuckles' yeah. addiction to candy, candy which has the effects of alcohol from feeling mm. warm and happy angry at the world to depression the next morning after knuckles <laughs> ingests a bunch of candy flapjack realizes that knuckles has become addicted to the candy so much so that he hallucinates he to sees flapjack crazy. as a oh. lollipop and tries eating him next knuckles begins manipulating flapjack and tells him that he's just fine and he can trust him though this only leads to <laughs> Two candy <laughs> rampages where he steals from homes, babies, Still a candy from a baby, a gumball machine. Then we go to this depressing Damn. scene showing just how this candy addiction has left yep. Knuckles. It's Getting left kicked out of the dirt. candy trough, being used as a doormat, and oh. taking any bit of candy he can get, even if it's from a stranger's mouth. A crackhead, basically. Uh, uh. uh. Bubby decides to send Knuckles off to isolation on a piece of the boardwalk into the sea. Here, Knuckles begins hallucinating and imagines a giant flapjack putting his arms He's inside in of his rehab. mouth and vomiting candy into it. Ugh. That's sick. Very dark episode if you think about yeah. it, especially yeah. seeing just how bad the effects of candy have left Knuckles. I really mm -hmm. like the episode though, it really makes you aware of just how bad alcohol or any addiction can be. Okay. Earth Mover. All right. Batman, Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond. Released in 1999 and aired on Cartoon Network and WB Kids. Today we're going to be talking no, about season Batman one, Beyond. episode 15, aka Earth Mover. We start with this teenage girl by the name of Jackie hanging with her friends, one of which is Terry McGinnis, aka the Batman, Batman after the Terry original McGinnis. Bruce Wayne Batman. She explains that she's been feeling like she was followed and washed by someone. Soon after that, Terry sees a mysterious figure outside through the window. A chase right, begins, but the figure isn't caught. The next day, Jackie's adopted father gives all 
all three of them arrive, but first he says he wants to show them something. That being a piece of land he plans on buying and placing a factory on. An earthquake happens and again, there is another fight scene. After this, Bill, her adopted father, explains that he thinks it might be Jackie's real father looking for him. Huh? He tells the story from many years ago and while okay. he was trying to dump toxic waste into an abandoned mine shaft, the wire pulling up the container got stuck on a piece of wood and resulted in the entire mine shaft collapsing in on itself. Jackie's father was at the bottom and ended up being crushed by the debris. Not only that, but was covered by the toxic waste. Everyone assumed that he That's died instantly wild. and Bill felt so bad that he ended up adopting Jackie who was only a kid at the time. That's Fast forward into the episode and the earth mover has trapped both Jackie and Bill underground. During this scene, Jackie finds out what secret. her father actually looks like and well... Oh. So like the text was saying, I can't show too much due to a oh. copyright claim, but basically Jackie is horrified seeing that this is her father. I mean, who wouldn't be? Look at the way they drew it. Yeah, yeah that's basically the scene in a nutshell. I mean, even listen to that voice. It sounds like he's struggling to get his words out. He seems to think that Bill betrayed him and left him to die so that he didn't have to split Bro, that's the too creepy for a He also Come sees on, Bill now. adopting Jackie as her getting stolen from him. Imagine accidentally dying and then the friend that accidentally killed you yeah. adopts your daughter. Mm -hmm. Bro, eventually. It's like a it's like a guilt adoption. Yeah. But if they were allowed, they probably wouldn't see it as like yeah. something good. Batman swoops in and saves a day. The episode ends with this very dark quote. My father. He's not your father. Not really. He's a ghost. Batman Beyond was ahead of his time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mooch really Master was. P, Mr. Mr. Meaty. Mr. Meaty was Mr. Meaty. Nah, this was is crazy. Into a mix of low ratings and criticism from adults and vegetarians who protested against the show. On <laughs> Ain't no way vegetarians protested. Nah, show, Ain't no way. This show was weird as Honestly, hell. the show was very lucky it lasted three years considering how ugly all of the characters were. The show Vegetarian. followed fast food workers I'll Josh and Parker through their odd adventures. Season one, episode six, begins I won't with get Parker over quote unquote mooching off of everyone and eating their food. Josh gets annoyed and tricks them into eating a raw patty then oh yeah yeah no the fucking um ringworm not ringworm it's a parrot he gets a parasite i saw this is one of the one episodes i remember and it freaked me out oh so it, it did freak me out of oh, everyone okay. and eating their food. Josh gets annoyed and tricks them into eating a raw So it actually then traumatized things start happening. Crazy. Like all of the food Parker is about to take a bite out of disappear. Josh records it with a camcorder and slows down the footage. Then we see that a giant tapeworm is oh, a tapeworm. eating all of his food. They decide to get rid of the tapeworm the only way they know how, fishing it out of Parker's stomach. They uh, do end up getting it uh, out and an Australian man comes by and says he'll buy it for his zoo. Though he doesn't take it to the zoo. Instead he uh... He swallows it whole in front of oh. him. Oh! Come on in. Oh! That's creepy now! Yo! That's the stuff! And says she tickles on the way down. <laughs> no, that was King no Ramsey's pause. King curse slash remembrance of courage. Courage. Oh, courage. yeah, yeah. Oh, courage. Oh, the cowardly dog. Uh, I think this is the Courage the cowardly dog. The this couple. list would not yeah. be complete without mentioning Duh. Courage the cowardly dog. Courage was always in Remember the Slap. The monsters that gave kids nightmares throughout mm -hmm. the entirety of the series. But courage itself traumatized. Yeah. I, I, I did not like watching it, but I couldn't remember, remember the Slap. Yes, yeah, remember the Slap. This does not want to return a historical slab because he hears on the news that it's worth $1 million. A person from the museum it belongs to comes over to take it back and offers used as a tote bag. Really, my guy? I'm pretty a sure you can bag. legally get it back <laughs> for free. Then the door gets slammed on him. When it becomes nighttime, they hear a creak at the door and check outside. Then we get King Ramses, who just oh, keeps repeating, return the slab or suffer my curse. Return the slab. Oh, that's crazy. Look how creepy that return crap was. Oh, suffer my curse. Well, it's stuff just for the such curse, a right. designed, and also it's a 3D model in a 2D animated show. Yep. There's so many instances of just plain creepy stuff in this cartoon, but that's what gave it its charm. I feel like Courage the Cowardly Dog definitely let the uh, kids yeah, know that, that shit creeped me out too. Genre. That nigga woke so, up. Yeah, ah! Shout out to Courage the Cowardly Dog for that. I also <laughs> want to talk about another okay. episode called Remembrance of Courage. No! Past, which is actually the second to last episode of the entire series. This episode is about Courage's parents, which sadly got taken away from him at an early <laughs> age due to an evil veterinarian. This veterinarian puts Courage his parents in a rocket ship and Courage can't do anything because he he's just a pup. While being chased, Courage hops into the garbage disposal and escapes. He watches as his parents are sent off to space. They got blood. For what? 
The most Muriel random Fonda. background story ever. The Muriel Fonda. How Courage is adopted by Muriel and why she decides to name him Courage. Meanwhile, in the present day, the same thing is about to happen to Muriel and Aww. Eustace. But luckily, Courage is able to save the day and send the veterinarian to space this time. In space, he finds himself with all the other dogs he has Aww. experimented on. And parents. Courage's parents. <laughs> Damn. Makes sense. Those and two episodes never left my mind. I, yeah, I think about those episodes to this day. Jurassic Bark, Futurama. This Futurama? Is I'm throwing in. The Wait, reason. no, 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 no. Futurama was not a kid's show. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. That was not I'm a kid's show. Well, he's saying cartoon episodes. One, oh, okay. Futurama wasn't really made for kids. Yeah. It was a show for young adults. And two, I don't think this episode traumatized anyone. It was just incredibly sad. And if you're a fan of Futurama, huh? you already know what I'm talking about. This episode, Jurassic Bark, was the hardest one to rewatch for me. This episode is about Fry's old dog from 1997 named Seymour. In case you guys don't know, Futurama takes place in the year 3000 with Fry being the only person from the year 2000. Since he accidentally fell into a cryogenic chamber on New Year's Day. Anyway, Fry finds Seymour as a fossil in a museum where he then takes home oh, to the professor. Yeah. The professor explains that he can actually bring back Seymour with new technology. Yeah. And so Fry begins getting ready for Seymour's return. This includes a doggy bed, a collar, and some chew toys. When the professor is ready to bring back Seymour, it Bender work, throws dude. his body into yeah. a pit of lava oh, because damn. he's jealous that Fry will have a new best friend. Damn, Amy. friend. We get a flashback of Seymour doing everything in his power to find Fry. Seymour eventually finds Fry, but no one in the lab notices that Fry is in there. Even his parents who go to pick up Seymour talk about frustration. Anyway, Damn. Bender jumps into the lava pit and retrieves Seymour's body. Seymour didn't burn due to the material covering his body. The professor finds out that Seymour actually lived his full lifespan of 15 years, 12 mm. years after Fry's disappearance. So Fry decides not to bring him back simply because he doubts Seymour even remembers him, and he probably moved on with another family. But wait, here's the kicker. We, the audience, get a flash. What happened? Oh, a flashback. A flashback. Is the audio probably. Damn. Ah, uh, he has them muted for claim. do remember. Oh, oh, he was waiting. It was no family. He waited years he for waited. my boy. Oh, yeah, I do remember this. I do remember this. Okay. No, yeah, that sad. was sad. That was very sad. The episode sad. was actually nominated for an Emmy in 2003, which, you know, that's just how good the episode that's was. Crazy. Sadly, it did not win the Emmy. Uh, the Simpsons beat it out, which is also that's made it. by Matt Groening. Okay. So, Matt Groening, good on you. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, episode tore my heart out when I watched it. Yeah, that was pretty sad. I ain't gonna lie to you. Hey, man, click the next video. And while you there, subscribe, you doofus merch.